The number e is a famous irrational number, and just like pi, its digits are unpredictable. But funny enough, there's a repeated pattern within the first few digits. Specifically, it goes 2.71828.1828. If you're generating random four-digit numbers, the probability of getting the same one twice in a row is 1 in 10,000. So it's no surprise that it happens at some point within the infinite sequence of digits, but right away is definitely noteworthy. Furthermore, the next six digits are 45, 90, 45. These are the angles on an isosceles right triangle, which is also known as a 45, 45, 90 triangle. This strange behavior is readily apparent because you don't need a complicated scenario to notice it. It's definitely noteworthy due to how unlikely it is. And finally, there's not really a mathematical explanation as to why it is how it is. These are my three requirements for what I consider a mathematical coincidence. And they are all subjective, but for the rest of this video, we'll be looking at some of my favorites. So let's continue. After E, your next thought might be to check pi for anything like this. Right off the bat, you might notice that the reflection of 314 spells pi, but this is more of an English language coincidence. For a strictly mathematical coincidence, you can go to digit 763, and you'll find a sequence of six nines in a row. Again, it's not notable that this happens at all in pi, since it is conjectured that any digit combination is equally likely, but it's notable how early it happens. Because in a randomly generated sequence, the chance of getting 6 of any digit in a row within the first 768 digits is less than 0.1%. Not only is this the first case of 6 digits in a row, it's also the first case of 4 and 5 digits in a row. Now that we've looked at e and pi, let's combine them. e is often used as a base for exponentiation, so what do we get with e to the pi? Well, it's 23.14 which is remarkably close to 20 plus pi. In fact, e to the pi minus pi is 19.9990999979. For a long time, people have searched for some reason why e to the pi is about 20 plus pi and didn't find it. But while I was working on this video, I learned about a sort of explanation. Basically, due to something called the Jacobi theta function, there's an identity where the infinite sum of 8 pi k squared minus 2 over e to the pi k squared is exactly 1. The terms get small so fast that the first term is already approximately 1. This means e to the pi is approximately 8 pi minus 2. And since 7 pi is approximately 22, 8 pi minus 2 is approximately 20 plus pi. But even still, the identity doesn't explain how it's this ridiculously close. What if pi is the base, though? Well, these coincidences are less impressive, but they are still pretty cool. Pi plus pi squared is close to 13, but not that close. Going from first and second powers to third, pi cubed is 31.006. Then fourth and fifth powers, pi to the fourth plus pi to the fifth isn't near an integer, but it is approximately e to the sixth, and the difference between them is less than 0.00002. There's also pi to the e. If you add it to e to the pi, it's very close to 45.6, but it's not an integer, so it's less cool. All of these so far involve exponents, but what about simple addition? Well, some people prefer a different circle constant. Tau equals 2 pi and is the number of radians in a circle. If you add that to e, you get another almost integer, 9.001. Now let's look at some coincidences that are actually useful. Everyone knows pi starts with 3.14, but the approximation 22 over 7, or 3 and a seventh, is actually closer to the real value of pi than 3.14. It's no coincidence that a rational approximation exists. In fact, every real number has a unique continued fraction representation where you can stop at any point to get an approximation. If you stop right before a big number, you usually get quite a good approximation, and 22 over 7 stops before a 15. But after that is a 1 and then a 292, which results in 355 over 113, which matches pi for 7 digits. So it's not a coincidence that you can find a good rational approximation, but it is a coincidence that pi has a 292 so early, which gives you one right away. I can't really compare it to e, because its continued fraction actually follows a clear pattern. Anyway, another useful coincidence is that 2 to the 7 twelfth is about 1 and a half. This also means 2 to the 5 twelfths is about 1 and a third. Why is this useful? 
Well, imagine a sequence of rectangles where each one is 2 to the 1 12th times the length of the previous one. Any pair spaced 12 apart will have a ratio of 1 to 2. Any pair spaced 7 apart will be approximately 2 to 3. And any pair spaced 5 apart will be approximately 3 to 4. If you make an instrument where the notes have these frequencies, then the approximately whole number ratios cause the notes to combine in cool ways. So this mathematical coincidence is why we have 12 notes. Here's another useful one. 2 to the 10 is 1024, and 10 cubed is 1000. Now why is this one useful? Well, human intuition tends to rely on powers of 10, and especially of 1000. Computers, on the other hand, use powers of 2 for just about everything. The coincidence bridges the gap, because you can easily say that when dealing with bytes, kilo means 1024. So if a file has 136 groups of 1024 bytes, the computer can just say it's 136 kilobytes, and you can know that that's approximately 136,000 bytes, even though it's technically 140,000 bytes. But not everyone does it this way. On Apple, one kilobyte is exactly 1,000 bytes, so that one would actually be labeled as 140. And on some applications like Blender, it would say 136 kibibytes, where a kibibyte is a unit unambiguously defined as exactly 1,024 bytes. In fact, there's a whole family of these 1,024-based prefixes. Most coincidences aren't very useful, though. A lot of them are just aesthetic math, which, to be honest, I think is pretty cool. When learning multiplication for the first time, I appreciated the fact that 12 is 3 times 4 and 56 is 7 times 8, which is nice because it has consecutive integers. Similar is the fact that 10 squared plus 11 squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared plus 14 squared. Now, we all know the Pythagorean triple 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared, but there's also 3 cubed plus 4 cubed plus 5 cubed equals 6 cubed. There's an interesting problem along these lines called the cannonball problem. Basically, is there a number of cannonballs where you can arrange them in both a square pyramid and a flat square? This means you have to find a number n where the sum of squares from 1 to n is itself a square. Obviously 1 works, but other than that, there's exactly one solution. The sum of squares from 1 to 24 is exactly 70 squared. This property actually allows you to construct the 24-dimensional even unimodular leech lattice. The existence of this lattice is why we know that 196,560 is the maximum number of 24-dimensional hyperspheres you can fit around a single 24-dimensional hypersphere, even though this problem is unsolved for dimensions 9 to 23. I think this result goes to show the value of mathematical curiosity, because you never know where it might lead you. Those are all the coincidences I wanted to show today, but if you have some I didn't mention, share them in the comments. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!